<laughs> is it still too early for you this morning? It's early. It is yeah, early. Well, no, it's really not that early. <laughs> no. I'm going to turn on this other light here so we can yeah, have a little bit more light here. All right, good morning, folks. This is Bill and Deb with I Ride Tiny House Adventures. We thought we'd do a quick update for you on a few things that we've been doing here. Um, it takes time to do all this stuff. But anyway, we got some more stuff to show you here, and we're going to start in the nose of the trailer. Well, what we've done here at the nose of the trailer here just recently in the last day or so, we went ahead and installed our little wall-mounted heater. Now, this is a 1,000-watt, 120-volt uh, wall-mount heater. And uh, we just now got it up and running, and uh, we're real excited about how it's going to work for us. And really all it's here for, we don't expect it to run us out of the trailer, but really all it's here for is just to uh, take the chill off because uh, most of the time when we start our adventure, we will be in climates where it'll be warmer most of the time but there will be those times when the temperatures drop down into the 40s into the evenings and things like that and early in the morning so we wanted something that would be convenient just to kind of take the chill off so uh, this is why we went with this little heater here now we had a extra hole in our panel here so it made it real easy to go ahead and run a wire over to it and we talked about that in a previous video and uh, showed you how we had the wire stubbed out there ready to go. Now the can that this thing mounts in, it mounts in a can that fits into the wall first and then you uh, mount the heater inside the can and then of course you attach the grill. The can itself is four inches deep altogether. I needed, uh, I needed to have a little bit of extra depth here because uh, to, my, to this paneling right here I was three and three quarters of an inch thick. So what I did in order to get this out far enough, we picture framed, the, after we cut the hole, we picture framed this here, and that way that brought that out far enough so that everything worked okay. Now we've also got this thing, it's on a circuit all by itself, completely all by itself, and it is, uh, it is protected by a GFCI breaker. So uh, we're, we're not concerned about anything because of that. We did that uh, just for safety reasons and it didn't cost that much more to do that. So there you go. In addition to that, uh, we've also done some other stuff and uh, we'll talk more about that here in just a second. We ran our shower drain down below, which we're gonna show you here in a little bit. And we went ahead and hooked up the sink over here, uh, which we'll show you how we did that here in a little bit. And what we used instead of P-traps what we used instead of P-traps is a P-trap alternative called a HEPVO, H-E-P-V-O. And I shot a short clip on how that uh, HEPVO works and, sh and everything, so let's take a look at that clip right now. P-trap alternative called a HEPVO, and you can look it up on, you can Google it, it's spelled H-E-P-V-O. Now the way a HEPVO P-trap alternative works, if you look inside it, you can see a membrane in there and it's shaped kind of like a sock is the way it's shaped. Now, uh, the water flows first into here and then of course runs through it. And I think there's an arrow there. Let me see. Yeah, see the arrow? Well, no, not on that side. Let me see. There should be an arrow there. Anyway, yeah, there's the arrow. You see where it says flow right there. That's the way you're supposed to uh, lay it out. So the flow runs that direction. When the liquid flows through that, uh, it causes that membrane in there to open up. Uh, when the liquid stops flowing, that membrane closes, and that's the way it works. And I did, I did uh, experiment with it uh, by setting it up on the shower, underneath the shower pan on our bench, and it does work the way they say. Now, they're also designed to be installed two different ways. You can install them uh, horizontally, which we will be doing underneath the shower, like this, and you can install them vertically, like this by using a different fitting up here on the top and so the one under the shower will be mounted under the floor uh, underneath the shower and it'll be mounted under the floor and the one that uh, is going to be uh, attached to the sink will be mounted vertically <coughs> vertically and it'll be just directly underneath the sink so that's the way we're going to go with that now according to Hepvo because no liquid remains in this after the uh, liquid flows through they say that it will not freeze, so we're not concerned about the freezing part. In addition to that, 99% of the time, we're going to be in climates where we don't have to worry about uh, freezing, freezing situations, so that's one thing. Another thing, too, that I plan to do with this particular one that's going to be mounted under the shower because it will be exposed to, you know, going down the road, is I'm planning on uh, building a shield down there to protect. 
Okay, so that's how a Hepbo P-Trap alternative works. So there you go. Now, we went with two of them. We got two separate drains here in the trailer. One is uh, underneath the shower, and the other one is uh, underneath the sink. Now, we don't have the, the finished uh, drain line ran below the floor in that part of the trailer, but uh, we're going to show you uh, how we've got it going so far, and then you'll get an idea of how everything works. So we're going to go take a look at that right now. All right, everybody, this is how it comes down out below the shower. This is where the shower drain itself actually dumps through the floor. We had to reduce it down to an inch and a half. These Hepvo P-Trap alternatives are available either an inch and a quarter size or inch and a half, and we went with inch and a half on, on this, so we had to reduce that down to inch and a half. Then when we come out here to the regular RV-style sewer dump that we have here, then we had to bring it back up to three inches to accommodate that. And this is where uh, you can also screw on a garden hose. This particular cap that we're using uh, will either let us, uh, we can actually screw onto a garden hose right here. And the neat thing about our holding tanks, our auxiliary tanks that we have, they'll go both ways. They'll either accept a garden hose attachment or the regular uh, sewer drain attachment like at a, a standard RV type hose. So anyway, that's how that works. Uh, there's no need to show you the drain coming out for the sink yet because well, I haven't done this part yet. I've got the uh, inch and a half PVC stubbed through the floor, but I still have to work all this. So let's go back inside now and let's take a look at how we did underneath the sink. All right, folks, this is how we have it done underneath the sink. And you can see this is, the, of course, the HEPVO right here. The neat thing about these HEPVO apparatus is they can be uh, either ran horizontally or vertically, either one. So we've got this arranged in such a way where it just simply comes right out. I, I can't really see. I hope you can see. I'm, I'm just kind of kneeled down here in front of the cabinet. But you can see how it comes down out and connects and then goes straight down to the hip bow here. Now we did look into trying to run this over to the side and down and that's why you see that cover where I had to cover a hole that I drilled earlier. But quite honestly by the time we did everything extra we had to do in order to get it over here it actually ended up taking up more space underneath the cabinet, so we actually lost storage space because of it. So then we figured out that it was probably easier just to go ahead and just run it straight down. So this is the way we've got that going. We've also got it set up in such a way where when I loosen this right here, I'll be able to slide this up a little bit and then uh, unscrew it from here, and then this thing can come out, and I can service it with no problem. So that's the gist of it right there. We're uh, we're really excited about how this is coming out. I dreaded doing this part, but actually, oh, actually, it wasn't all that bad. It wasn't all that bad. <laughs> Took me a little bit to figure it out, but because I've never ran a sink drain before, I've never, um, you know, actually seen how everything connects together on a double sink like that. So I had to uh, had to play with it for a little bit and figure it out. But we got her. We got her all figured out here. So anyway, that's about it. Is there, uh, is there anything else you want to add, dear? No, nope, just getting closer and closer. Yeah, I know. Every time we turn around, we're getting a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer. So uh, anyway, I guess we'll go ahead and end it right here. Uh, it's just a quick update of the little things that we're doing. So got some more to do. We'll try to get the videos up a little more often. Uh, try to try to show show. Uh, uh, you know, let you see a lot more more frequently. I guess that's the best way to put that. So, but we're getting down. It's getting down to where uh, we don't have all that much to go. You know, uh, like I told a friend of mine the other day, all we like is finishing up. That's it. That's all we got left is just finishing up. Anyway, we're gonna say goodbye for now. And uh, anyway, uh, and I gotta go take care of some other stuff this afternoon, so I won't be working on the trailer. So, would you like to say goodbye, sweetheart? Bye, see you next time. <laughs> okay. All right, folks, y'all take care. This is Bill and Deb with iRide Tiny House Adventures saying we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye now. GoPro, stop recording.